today we're going to discuss some introductory biology concepts um, having to do with what makes something a living thing. So if we break down the word biology, bio here means life or living things. Ology means the study of. So biology itself is studying living things. So before we can get into that, we need to discuss what actually makes something a living thing. And there's five characteristics that we will be going over. The first characteristic of living things is that all living things show organization, which means that they are made out of cells. Cells are the basic units of all life. So in order for something to be living, it must be made out of cells that make it function. There's two different types of organisms. Uh, some can be considered unicellular, which means they're made out of one cell, and also they can be considered multicellular, which means they're made out of many cells. Humans would be an example of multicellular organisms because there's billions of cells in our body that work together to make us function. And I'll show you a couple of examples of those types of cells. This is an example of a one-celled organism. This is an amoeba, and it's really just this blob is the entire body of an amoeba. It's one cell. So everything that makes this organism function happens within that one cell. It's a very simple organism. You wouldn't be able to see it because it's one cell. You would need a microscope to actually visualize this. A mouse, on the other hand, would be considered multicellular because it's made of many cells. And yes, that is an ear coming off of the mouse's back. I thought that was just an interesting picture because it also shows what they're doing with scientific research as well. A second characteristic of living things is that all living things are able to reproduce, which means they're able to continue the species. So really what this means is that, for example, the human species has to have some members that can reproduce, otherwise we would become extinct. So even though there may be some exceptions where maybe somebody is unable to reproduce, it doesn't mean they are not a living thing. It is really looking at a species level that some members of the species have to be able to reproduce so that the species does not die out. The third characteristic of living things is that all living things go through a life cycle where they grow and develop and then they'll change throughout their lives. So really what this means is, and you can relate this to your own life, you think back to when you were a, a child and how you are now, you've changed throughout that time. And as you continue throughout your life, you will also continue to change. And then eventually all things will die. So all living things go through this life cycle. Um, if it's an insect, for example, the life cycle may be very short, but they still go through this being born, changing, and dying. And humans, the life cycle might be longer, but we still all go through this life cycle. Just an example here to illustrate a, a, a change that would happen throughout a human's life. The fourth characteristic of living things is that all living things are able to adjust to their environment, which means that if something happens to you, if somebody comes along and steps on your foot, that's considered to be a stimulus and you would have a response to that. You would feel pain and you might say, ow. So that means that you're a living thing. You know, if I came up and punched the wall, the wall doesn't react. It's not a living thing. So all living things have some kind of response to what happens to them. The example that's listed here would be if it was cold, your body would shiver and you might get goosebumps. You do that because you're a living thing responding to what's going on around you. This goes with being able to adjust to the environment. This word here is homeostasis, which means that because you're a living thing, your body internally will regulate itself to the environment. So for example, we have a constant body temperature um, and it doesn't get too high or too low because we have homeostasis that's going on. And we don't think about these things. You know, you're not thinking all day, what's my body temperature? What's my body temperature? Your body does that on its own. And because you're a living thing, you're doing homeostasis. When homeostasis stops, you will no longer be living because homeostasis is, it goes with being able to adjust to the environment. And in order to do this, your body needs to have energy to continue with the homeostasis. And all living things do this. Uh, just some more examples 
This would be responding to it being hot, showing sweating, and a dog panting, that they're reacting to what's going on around them. And the fifth and last characteristic of living things is that all living things are able to adapt and evolve. And this really is something that takes time. This is a change over a long period of time where a species will slowly adapt and change in order to survive. It'll adapt to its environment. So I think the best way to illustrate this is to show you a picture. And this is a walking stick, which is right here and it should be difficult to see because that's the point of the walking stick. Uh, slowly over time this has evolved to be like this because it does blend in to the sticks in the background which would be an advantage for the walking stick because it's a camouflage and so that it's not sticking out so it will not be eaten. So this is a survival mechanism that over time the walking stick has developed. So this would be a slow change over time. And sometimes this can take thousands and thousands of years. But that would be evolution. And this concludes our presentation on characteristics of living things.